Hi guys, Squirrel here and welcome to episode 7 of my tutorial series on Microsoft Flight Simulator. The assumption in this series is that you've watched previous episodes because they build in knowledge as we go through. So make sure you've watched previous episodes. There is a playlist available in the video description, so don't miss out on any previous stuff before you get to this one. Make sure you also subscribe for future content. I'll be producing more tutorials in the future. And the goal of this particular episode is to discuss and use flaps. What are flaps on aircraft? What are they for? How do we use them? How do they affect the plane? Now, if you want to follow along, and I strongly urge you to do that, you'll need to set yourself up in a Cessna 152, which is this one here, just the basic Cessna 152. You need to spawn in at Renton Airfield, that's K-R-N-T, Kilo Romeo November Tango, and just set the weather to clear skies and local time of midday. We're going to jump inside the cockpit shortly and discuss things, but first let's have a look at the outside and see where the flaps are. It's important to note before we begin this episode that not all flaps work the same way across different types of aircraft. Indeed, there are different types of flaps. As ever though, I want to keep the discussion simple and easy to understand. It's more important that you understand the concepts of flaps and when and where to use them. So on the Cessna 152, as you can see, it's an upper wing aircraft and the flaps are actually on the inside of the ailerons. So these are the ailerons here. They are control the roll of the aircraft. And then just inside of those, if I deploy them, they deploy in stages, that's position one, position two, and position three, or what it's called 10, 20, and 30 degrees. Now you can see that the flaps actually came out slightly and they dip down. They, they basically, what they do is alter what they call the wing's angle of attack. As you can see here, if we look down the length of the wing, if you get the camera set correctly, the air flows from left to right as you look at this plane here, and it flows across in a straight line. Most of the lift of a plane is generated from the angle that the wing presents to that airflow. That's called the angle of attack. And what these flaps do is they effectively change the angle of attack of the wing, and that has a few effects which we'll discuss shortly. Now, inside the cockpits, you know, most aircraft is laid out in a different way. On the Cessna 152, the flaps are controlled here, and you can see they're actually marked with uh, degrees of, let me just get over there, degrees of flaps 0, 10, 20, and 30. It's currently on the 30 position, as we can see, and uh, if we pull that up, we can set it up in notches. Aircraft work in different ways, flaps work in different ways, and these things even work in different ways. For example, in a Warrior, it's actually a lever down here. Uh, in other aircraft, you may not be able to set them in notches. It might just be more of a gradient thing. But on this particular one, we can set them in notches. Now, as I've already said, flaps will change the angle of attack of the wing. They also increase wind drag. They effectively trade speed, forward speed, for lift. That's what they're basically doing. It's very useful during the approach and landing because you can get the same amount of lift out of the wing at a lower speed. But the net effect is that you've slowed the plane down. So obviously during normal flights, you don't want the flaps to be down because you want more speed. But when you're coming in for landing, you will deploy flaps. It will slow you down and give you the same amount of lift. There's also some useful other side effects, which we'll look at later. In essence, when you deploy flaps, it allows the wing to generate lift at a lower speed. And what that does is it reduces the minimum speed at which the wing can fly. In other words, the stall speed. And that is extremely useful. So let's take a closer look at the airspeed indicator because there's a little bit of information here that relates to flaps. Now, again, this is always different for different aircraft and you have to consult the pilots or the flight manual for that particular plane that you're going to fly. In the Cessna 152, you can see that you've got a green speed, a green area, a yellow area, a red line, and then you've got this thick white line on the inside, and it's especially thick here. So what does all this mean? Well, the green area is your kind of normal flying speed. Anywhere in this speed zone, you can use full deflection on any controls. That's you know, the, the yoke, the rudder pedal, and the aircraft is designed to, to operate within those speeds. The yellow area here is what's called the maneuvering area. This is where you're going at a fairly high speed. 
and indeed the maneuvering speed is written here 104 which is actually lower than the yellow arc but this particular aircraft has a 104 maneuvering speed essentially if you get into this zone and your speed you must not apply full deflection to any of your controls because frankly the aircraft is not designed to take that kind of stress and it could just rip apart now in terms of flaps flaps are dictated by this white line here and the very edge of the white line appears around about 85 knots and on a Cessna 152 this is the speed at which you must no longer have flaps so if you happen to take off with flaps then before you get to 85 knots and beyond you must fully retract your flaps equally if you're cruising along quite happily at say 95 knots and you want to deploy flaps you will need to slow your speed down to less than 85 knots before you can deploy them. Now the advantage is that when you do deploy them, as I said earlier, you get a lot more drag, so the speed will come down fairly quickly. But do not deploy them beyond this speed. Further down here, this is looking into the very low speed territory, and this is indeed where we get to the stall kind of speeds. On a Cessna 152, the stall speed of... Um, an aircraft in full landing configuration is 35 knots, which is approximately down the bottom end of this white mark here. It's all a bit woolly because it does depend on wind and gusts and all kinds of other factors. But if you're in this area here with your flaps extended, you're about to stall. Now, if you don't have your flaps extended, the plane will stall at the bottom of this white line here, which is at about 40 knots. So if you'd have no flaps deployed, and you pull the throttle and just keep the nose up so that it can't get any faster you hold the attitude when you get to about 40 knots you're going to see two things happen you're going to hear the stall warning it's like an audible noise that you'll hear and the plane will begin to stall and we'll take a look at that shortly but it's something to be aware of and we'll demonstrate this that when you've got flaps retracted your stall speed is higher than when you have flaps deployed the flaps allow you to stall at a lower speed, and that is an important concept. One final thing, this is the red line, never ever exceed this speed. So what I want you to do now is get in your Cessna 152, take off as I showed in the last video, climb out, get to about 3,000 feet, and then we'll talk again. So here we are, we're over 3,000 feet now, don't worry about being exactly at 3,000 feet, it doesn't matter. We're over 3,000 feet, and if you look at our RPM gauge, we're doing 2,200 RPM. So for that given power setting, flying approximately straight and level, we are doing, uh, what's that, 90? About 90 knots. That's a comfortable cruising speed. What I want you to pay attention to is the horizon, where it is relative to the top of our cockpit. Visually, this is... A position that you want to remember because this is visually what it look like when you're flying straight and level. Now if you look at the outside of the plane, you can see we've got the flaps fully retracted and the, width, the, the whole plane is in a roughly horizontal position with the wing sort of cambered down a few degrees. And in that configuration we're flying about 90 knots. So the next question is what happens if we pull the throttle at what kind of speed will this wing give up? At what point will we stall? Well, in order to induce a stall, what we'll need to do is pull the throttle back, and then we don't want to lose any altitude. So, in order to not lose altitude, I will have to increase the wing's angle of attack. In other words, as we pull the throttle, the resistance, the drag through the air will increase, and the speed will come down. We've got nothing propelling us forward anymore, so we'll get slowed down by the wind or the air if you like. So the speed will come down. The nose will want to go down and it will want to dive down. That's exactly what's going to happen. I'm gonna pull back on the stick. I'm gonna stop that from happening. I will increase the wing's angle of attack. It will generate more lift by doing that. And it will keep us at this altitude. Now at some point, it's gonna give up. You'll hear the stall warning go off. I'm gonna pause it at the point where the stall warning goes off and we'll have a look at what speed we started to get the stall warning. So here we go, we'll fly level, we're gonna pull the throttle back, airspeed's gonna come down, and you can see the vertical speed's already starting to go down, so I'm just gonna pull the stick back. 
So I'm maintaining altitude. Notice the angle that I'm now presenting. Notice the attitude to the horizon. Notice the airspeed. Wait for the store warning. Okay, let's pause that. Now, fortunately, the live pause is... is <laughs> the live pause is carried on simulating the plane, unfortunately. But it was about... When it actually did this, it was, in fact, at about 45, just over 40 knots is when it, I heard the store warning go off. And if you look at the actual attitude of the aircraft, you can see, relative to horizontal airflow, we've had to change the shape of the wing. The nose is right up in the air. As a pilot, we can't see over the nose anymore. If we try to land in this kind of view, we simply can't see the runway. And that's an important problem. We need the nose to be down, and in order to create the same amount of lift, though, we've had to change the wing's angle of attack. Now, when we do this, but with flaps, you'll notice that the plane will be a lot more horizontal because the flaps themselves will change the wing's angle of attack for us, but we won't have to pitch the nose quite so much. And also, we won't be stalling at 45 anymore, we'll be stalling somewhat lower. But this live pause isn't perfect, and when I unpause it now, you'll feel what happens. There you go. So, the wing literally just gave in. I'm going to pitch the nose down, put the power back in, airspeed will come back, and then we'll bring the nose back up again. Actually, probably what I wanted is like a real pause, not a live pause. I need to look that up to see whether that's even possible. Alright, so we'll just reconfigure the aircraft. I'll just uh, get the speed back up a little bit. Now, I want to do this, but with the flaps fully extended this time. So, I need to be below uh, 85 knots, if you remember. If you look at the airspeed, I need to be in that white arc, which I am. So, I'm going to deploy one, two, three stages of flaps. Notice the airspeed comes down. The drag has just increased massively. So, I'm now at full power. And if you look at my flaps indicator, you can see they're on 30 degrees. If you look at the camera you can see that the flaps are deployed and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get this thing back into a level configuration and then we'll take a look at things and see what things look like okay that's settling down you normally have to give it about 10 seconds for the aircraft to settle so a very slight climb let's try that there we go that's trimmed now a couple of things number one I'm no longer cruising along at 2200 rpm i've got 2200 rpm but now i'm in full throttle i wasn't in full throttle before full throttle would have been up here i'm now in full throttle and getting 2200 rpm but more importantly my speed is no longer anywhere near what was it 95 knots it's now 55 knots that's a huge speed difference this is why you don't fly with flaps deployed because it kills your performance. However, if you just look at the outside of the aircraft, notice how beautifully horizontal it is. Notice how much I can see the horizon. I am, instead of flying at 95 knots, I'm now flying at 55 knots. And at 55 knots, I can land this plane. I can land it safely. That means I can land this plane with the flaps down and I can see the runway. And because I'm landing at a lower speed, I can then stop in a shorter distance. In other words, the flaps give you huge benefits when it comes to landing. They do everything for you. They give you more lift, they lower the stall speed, and they give you better visibility on the runway. However, when you're flying at cruise, as you can see now, it's killing performance. We're at full throttle, burning fuel like crazy, and we're only going 55 knots. That's horrendous. At what speed will it stall? That's the next question. So I'm going to pull the throttle back and we're going to take a look at the airspeed when the, when the stall horn goes off and see what speed we're doing. Right, throttle's coming back. Same thing's going to happen. Airspeed's going to come down. We're going to have to pitch the nose up. Keep the attitude. And, yeah. Let me just move the camera up slightly. So it basically stalled at a roundabout here when we first heard it. It's not an exact thing, it does depend on a lot of factors. 
know, the airspeed, the temperature of the air, the, the gust, the wind, like there's lots of factors here, it's not exact. But instead of stalling up here, it basically stalled down here. And what that means is we can fly more safely, we can still generate lift and fly at a lower speed than we could without flaps. And that's good when we're coming into land as well. Let me just recover from this, I'll unpause it, nose goes down, bottle comes in, get the airspeed and then gradually pitch back. It's quite easy to recover from a stall, um, but the one thing that you do, let me just retract these flaps a second, the one thing that you do need when you recover from a stall is altitude. You can trade altitude for speed any time, as I've already shown you. If we have a critically low airspeed and we suddenly stall, we just put the nose down and we get our speed back. What you can't really do that is when you're at low altitude. If you've not got the altitude, you don't have the ability to trade it for speed quickly. And that's why stalling at a low altitude is very, very dangerous because you have no options at that point. You can't just trade it and get it back. So if you're gonna practice stalling, if you're gonna practice this flat kind of stuff, do it at a high altitude, like 3,000 feet, and uh, you'll always be able to recover from it. So we've already seen that flaps are incredibly useful, and I've talked about how they're incredibly useful during landing. They're also incredibly useful during takeoff. Flaps effectively trade runway distance for climb rates. In other words, if you use some flaps, it reduces the amount of ground roll you need, but it does harm your climb rate. Now, the amount of flap that you use on an aircraft during takeoff and landing, in fact, is aircraft specific. You need to look in the pilot's manual for that aircraft to find out. On the Cessna 152 and the 172, normally you would take off without any flaps. If you've got a decent runway length, you really don't need them. These wings generate huge amounts of lift. However, if you were doing a short field takeoff uh, where you don't have much runway length, or if you were taking off on something like a soft surface and you wanted to get off the ground quickly and reduce the weight on that front wheel bar, then you need to use a short field takeoff procedure. But that's something that we can cover in future videos. In the next video, in the next tutorial, we're gonna put all of this together and we're gonna see if we can actually perform a safe landing. So give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe for more episodes. Take care guys and happy flying.